almost a year since Russia began its invasion of Ukraine. It was widely expected to be quick and one-sided. It has been anything but. Russia has been renewing its offensive in recent days. Ukraine promising a stern defense as they've had from the get-go. Let's bring in my guest tonight, George Beebe, former director of the CIA's Russia Analysis and director of Grand Strategy at the Quincy Institute. He's up late with me tonight uh, to talk about this. Good to see you again, George. Good to see you. As we look at where things stand right now, again, we weren't expecting to get to a one-year anniversary. People thought this was going to be over and done with. The Ukraine military certainly has proven the world wrong. Well, that's exactly right. I think uh, the balance of opinion a year ago was that this was going to be a very quick war. And if you compare the Ukrainian and Russian militaries on paper, this shouldn't have been a close uh, fight at all. But uh, the Ukrainians surprised a lot of people. Uh, and the uh, the coupling of their courage and, and battlefield savvy with the kind of high technology support that the United States and NATO have been able to provide has uh, really evened this uh, battle out. And we're now in what looks to be a long-term stalemate. So, so when you look at the U.S. involvement, and clearly there are not American boots on the ground, there, there was a lot of fear from the get-go it might get to that point. It certainly doesn't appear like we're heading in that direction. But there has been pressure on the Biden administration to supply more sophisticated uh, equipment like F-16 warplanes to send those over to continue to help the offensive there. Uh, is there. Is there a possibility that we're going to see that reach that next level over the next couple of months? Well, I do think there is that possibility. Uh, the Russians want this to be a war of attrition. They want to just wear down the Ukrainians' ability to wage this war, use up their ammunition, use up their, their weaponry, uh, exhaust the West's patience for supporting Ukraine. That's not the kind of war that the Ukrainians want to be fighting. Mm -hmm. It doesn't play to their strengths. They want to get this war over more quickly. They want to turn this into a high-technology war of maneuver where they can make a decisive breakthrough. And that's why they're asking for this kind of equipment. And I think over time, the West is going to feel compelled to provide it. President Biden told ABC News tonight he is ruling out, at least for now, the idea of sending F-16s over to Ukraine. But as you look at the, the involvement and you look at the, the coalition, a, a large coalition supporting Ukraine in this, stateside, there are many people that, that A, believe the Biden administration has, has done too much, that is far more involved when there are more pressing matters on the, uh, on the domestic front. And there are others that don't believe that the administration has gone far enough. There are still these diverging voices. Anytime we see military action, think back to Iraq 20 years ago. Uh, when you look at the debate now versus the debate back then, what similarities are there, or, or is, is it comparing apples to oranges? Well, there are different wars, but there are some similarities. And, and I think one of them is that it's going to be very difficult to drive the Russians off of all of Ukrainian territory and to win this war in an unconditional way. Um, I, I think the, the basic reason for that is the Russians still have an awful lot of unused uh, escalatory potential, including uh, the world's largest nuclear arsenal. So, you know, push is coming to shove in Ukraine, and I think we're going to have to find a way uh, to enable the Ukrainians to negotiate a favorable uh, settlement mm -hmm. to end this war, uh, and to do so in a way that does not risk uh, what President Biden has called World War III, a direct military confrontation between the United States and Russia. That's a tricky balance to strike, and we're, we're trying to feel our way forward on that. And it seems like Russia wouldn't want to be part of any agreement where they don't get back the territory that they believe is, that they are the rightful owners of. Well, I think certainly territory is a part of this, but also the Russians are going to insist on some kind of understanding that Ukraine is not going to be part of the NATO alliance or have some sort of uh, official uh, military alliance with the United States. That was an issue that was at the, the root of this war, and I think it's one that the Russians won't agree to settle unless they have some sort of understanding on that. So, again, one year in, beyond this, you mentioned about where we have to, where, what we may see intensify. And there was a lot of talk over the last week with Vladimir Putin meeting with, with China's top foreign affairs official uh, that China might somehow start subsidizing uh, the, the Russian efforts. Do we see China possibly taking that role? Is, what's the gain for China to interject itself into this if they so choose? 
Well, I think the Chinese are trying to strike a balance on this war as well. Russia is clearly their, their most important international partner. They don't want a situation where the Russians lose this war in some humiliating fashion, and in so doing, allow the United States to, to turn its full attention and full military might on China. On the other hand, they don't want a situation where they have alienated the United States. It's still a a critical trade partner for China, and they don't want to alienate Europe, uh, which is also a very important uh, commercial partner for the Chinese as well. So for now, they're trying to strike a balance that maybe is tipped a little bit in Russia's direction, but I don't think they're ready yet to take that step where they would actually provide the Russians with significant amounts of lethal military aid. George, did President Biden's trip to, to Poland and to Ukraine this week, did that change anything, or was that more seen as uh, just a show of solidarity and nothing more? Well, I think the major purpose of that trip was to send a message to the NATO alliance and to Ukraine that uh, Western support is not going to dry up for the Ukrainians, and also to send that same message to Russia, that it cannot count on the West abandoning Ukraine and allowing Russia more or less to win by default. Um, but I, I think the danger that we're in right now is that all sides have escalated their rhetoric in this war to the point where it's going to be difficult mm -hmm. to back down and compromise when the time comes for negotiation. So that's something we're going to have to pay close attention to. George Beebe from the Quincy Institute. I appreciate the perspective. Anytime we talk about these issues, uh, good to see you tonight. Thank you. And the final five is back after this.